Welcome to the This Is Real Life podcast, a podcast designed to help you with engaging in real life, embracing real people, encountering a real God. Hey, what up, what up, what up? Welcome all my podcast listeners and YouTube watchers. My name is Damien Giacchino and I am hosting the This Is Real Life podcast with some of my favorite people, Pastor Dean and Pastor Jesse. What's going on, y'all? How y'all feeling? Feeling, feeling good. good. Episode number two. Number two. If you Here didn't we catch go. episode number one, you got to go back. Yes, That's right. go back and listen. You know. Quality stuff. Yes, quality, yeah. quality. <laughs> so that was our soft launch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we have no video, but this time we have video. Yes. So you're yeah. going to see us, you're going to see some awkward moments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had a, a great conversation on getting your hopes up and how yeah. to keep your hopes up which is super important in, in a season like we're in where there's a lot of um, things that people are going through yeah. where they can possibly be losing hope, mm-hmm. frustrated. Um, so, yeah, any, any recap from that Yeah, I mean, I just heard, I, I heard from one person specifically who lost their mom mm. and just saying how timely that series was. You wow. Know? So, you don't, we never know. You know, mm. we're, you know, a lot of times people think that when you plan out your messages, you're not being spirit led. Mm. But I've always said, you know, when you the Holy Spirit's a planner. So when we're asking God, what does he want us? What's he laying on our hearts? He yeah. knew exactly mm. who yeah. those messages were going out to. So it's just encouraging to to know that somebody was listening when their hopes were down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we gave them a reason to get their hopes up. That's in right. December. So. Come on. That's awesome. Yeah. So they can, they can check that out on on the website, the, the, the message itself, the series yeah, and the, the series, podcast. Everything's on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, we've done a great, it's a lot of great content mm-hmm. on our, on our YouTube page. It's all organized. Organized. I mean, and we compete for likes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's know. right. In fact, go, I told, go to mine. And, uh, in fact, I told <laughs> Amy that we she Amy is actually winning the reboot devotional race. Oh, really? Facts. I yes. saw it. That's I awesome. I have one seventy four to one seventy seven. Last time I looked, and I said, "Babe, you are beating everybody, and you only got me by three. Yeah. So when I saw I had like 34, <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go see what mine is. <laughs> I was like, take it down. <laughs> Some of them they forgot to put up. So I'm like, yeah. I I said, hey, can we get, get all no of those up? So, but. so now we need to restart. Everyone needs to go back and watch right. it. So yeah. Right. Good race. Yeah, we'll Pastor, just post it. Post Pastor Jesse had an illustration in her. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs> well, um, as most churches, uh, different pastors and leaders, they, they see God out for the theme that they believe that God is revealing to them for their church. Mm-hmm. And uh, last year it was, it was unlimited, you know, yeah, yeah. which, which, which worked very well because it, it's really hard to kind of pinpoint what thing we should have went with with 2020 knowing all that happened. Right. Mm-hmm. So you allowed all the, the pastors and, and the different leaders to speak what God was saying to them individually. And yeah. you were like, Hey, pick which one you want to run with. Um, but for 2021, you honed in a little bit more specifically and God put on your heart for reboot. Yeah. Now that's, that's an interesting name. And, you know, I looked up the definition and I thought the definition has some underlying biblical meanings to it. And I, yeah. I want to read some of the definitions and then start off with a question. Um, so reboot can mean something that has been restarted or revived. Mm-hmm. Reboot can mean to produce a distinctive new version. Reboot can also mean to make a change in order to establish a new beginning. It also can mean to start up again after closing or shutting down mm. to boot up again. Wow. Right. wow. I really yeah. like that last mm-hmm. definition, to start up again, closing or shutting down, or to boot up again. Now, when going through a year like 2020, mm-hmm. which we all can agree was a very tumultuous year, how it's still important. going. It's still going. It's still going. going. Yeah. I like what Sean Smith said. Just because you, you know, the... the the Roman calendar shift yeah, right. doesn't right. mean our that, calendar shift. You know, yeah, our, our calendar yeah, shift. Yeah. We're, we're still not done with the season, mm-hmm. which actually um, I I wrote about a little bit in a blog that I just posted. Anyway, okay. free pub. They, where, where can they find that? Where can they find that blog at? DeanDeGore.com. All right, let's move on. No. <laughs> well, so so how important for a church, an organization, a business, a family, or individuals is it for them to reboot? Mm-hmm. Um, after a year like 2020, going into a year like 2021. Yeah, I think, you know, we talked a lot about, you go back in March and uh, when all this, you know, when the pandemic first hit, we were talking a lot about a new wine skin Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're just thinking this thing was going to probably be two weeks and, you know, God was giving us a glimpse of what, you know, some things that we needed to shift. And it was a total powering down 
I believe, of an old model. Now, when I power down my Mac, which I recently did, um, there was a new OS system. Mm -hmm. And so when I powered, I had to power down, I had to reboot in order for the new operating system mm. to, to come into play. And um, that's really what I think. I just think that um, the theme of reboot is really powering up Mm. To something that looks different. Listen, mm. if we've went through all of this and everything <laughs> we're doing is the same thing, then I think we've missed the purpose behind the season. And that's why I feel like for at least for us, the season is 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 extended because I, I just feel like um, the things that God made clear to us in 2020, he wants to continue to really clarify and make it a part of who we are as we yeah. reboot, as we start up again, um, you know, I just think it looks different. There's a lot of different areas that we could talk about, we, and I'm sure we will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the important things, when, when you came up with the theme and you shared it with the staff, you know, it, it brought me back down to my why. Mm -hmm. You know, it caused me to, you know, why church? Uh, why yeah. online service, mm -hmm. yeah, why yeah. fellowship, why community. I think it's super important to, when we reboot, to power off and power on again. In, yeah. in that process of powering off, meaning reflecting and, and, and praying and seeking God, I think the why is super important. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for anyone who's watching or listening, um, wh how could you speak into the person out there is like, they may need a reboot because right now their view of church, their mm -hmm. view of community, their view of online service, they might be asking like, why, why is this any, why is this important? Excuse me. And yeah. I know you mentioned in a recent message, rebooting the mission and vision, yeah. getting back to the why will help yeah. us not miss God when it comes to encountering him. Yeah. I think, I think for all of us, at least for me, you know, when things are powered down, uh, you realize what you miss. I mm. um, mm -hmm. totally lost my phone um, probably about a month or so ago. I dropped it, and it shattered. And my phone, literally, I could not access any of my contacts. I actually lost a lot of contacts. So if you're uh, texting me and I'm <laughs> like, who is this? Don't get offended. It's literally, I lost all my... But I didn't realize what I was missing until I couldn't access it anymore. And I think for me, that's when I'm talking about, you know, um, it's seasons like we've been through in 2020 that our why is clarified, right? Like, so for me, the things that we took for granted, right? I took, gr I took for granted my contacts. I just mm -hmm. flip it open, mm -hmm. hit a name. And now literally I don't have some people's numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't have their, I don't know how to get a hold of them. I'm sure I could Facebook them or something like that, but I took for granted those contacts, those connections. Yeah. And I think when those things, when we can't meet, when we can't come together, right? Yeah. Okay, now as we reboot, that's why I've been so adamant. Like, we've got to be fighting for relationships, yes. fighting yeah. for the right, right thing, right? Yeah. Like, I've been powered down so, so much relationally with quarantines and, and, you know, having the virus myself. Look, look. When we reboot, like, I want to be intentional with my relationships mm -hmm. and not take them for granted. And I think a lot of times you don't realize um, how much you miss something until, you know, you can't access it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, to what you're saying, like, change is always loss. There's always mm -hmm. loss of something when there's change. Yeah. And so when we reboot, um, it's the, mm -hmm. like, discovering, it's the valuation of, is that loss bad? Um, and... Um, if it, if it is, then, then say goodbye to it. And then mm. when you reboot, you, you build back up on what, what needs to stay. Um, and then if, if your priorities are such that that loss is something that is important to you, you'll know it. Yeah. yeah. Like you'll know it in that moment. Like, right. like I need those contacts. That's mm -hmm. actually an integral part of, of my phone, you know? <laughs> and so when you, when you rebuild, you come back better. Exactly. Because hopefully you now back up your contacts. Right, right. <laughs> right? So, well, I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My screen froze, Pastor Jesse. Literally couldn't access So maybe access not a, a good example, but Man. you come back better than you right, were right. before. You know, you come right. back re reflecting on, okay, I, I truly value this. And so yeah. this is what I'm going to do to make sure that it remains, you know, as I go forward. 
Yeah, but and I think for me, it's about intentionality, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, you know, I'm leading a group. I've asked all our staff to lead a group because we want to be intentional because, um, and I've told this to both of you guys, but I think, you know, um, there were a lot of other things that had our attention and mm-hmm. we weren't necessarily, um, you know, I would just say our small group life at our church, though it was it was happening. I think it was on autopilot because yeah. we had people that they yeah. do relationship really well, didn't need a whole lot of high maintenance there. I mean, people just, those, and those are the people we stuck with, the 15 groups or so that we yeah. had. But personally, like I just realized how much the entire church mm-hmm. needs to reboot and we need to upgrade mm-hmm. in yeah. the area of connection and community. And yeah. so... Because I think yeah. we would all agree that the mission of of our church, or we're talking yeah. about mission of our church, was never that Sundays was the connection point. Right. 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 Sundays is our celebration point. Exactly. And, yeah. and so... What's happening Yeah, what's happening, life. meeting each other, kind of getting that, that jolt for the rest of the week, but it was never meant to be the sustenance of mm-hmm. our relationship. Right. And so, again, like, we see that, okay, we had a loss, but yeah. what is our real value? And um, how do we move forward rebuilding that? Man, I know that. I'm getting off topic right Go now, but it. she is going somewhere right now, with <laughs> it, and it's exactly what I feel like is uh, some of the remedy of what we are experiencing just as, you know, a nation, a city, community, a church is, you know, if, if a lot of the relationships, um, if, if we had more than 10% doing life together, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, how much better and stronger would we be going through this season mm-hmm. together rather than maybe isolated and alone? Mm-hmm. And um, I know people are connected and in different ways, but could you imagine if we had 60% of the people mm-hmm. in relationship before the pandemic? Mm-hmm. What would what would it have what would that season 2020 what would it how would it have been different? Mm-hmm. I, at least for my life, I know it would have been different. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, th- I think those are just some of the things that I challenge my own self with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we know that, you know, stats looking back at 2020, the, the, the singles that were connected, not just in the church, mm-hmm. but if, if you were a single person and had, were connected to some kind of bubble, yeah. as they call it, you, you weathered 2020 a lot better right. than your other single counterparts that had nobody to mm-hmm. connect to. So, yeah, even, I mean, those connections are important in the church, out of church, to build, you know, to yeah. have moving forward in a time where pandemics might come or sickness might come, whatever it might be, yeah, like right. being connected. Yeah. What, one of the things that uh, I think about when I ask the question, you know, people are asking why church, why community? Yeah. Because I've even asked myself to redefine what that looks like to me because there's been such a us and them mm, mentality mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah. Right. And so good. It's, it's the church where people can come with their with their uh, dysfunctions, mm-hmm. with their sh- challenges, and be loved because the Bible says Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Amen. So, you know, one of the things that I've learned or we're going through as a staff is in rebooting is what does it look like in embracing real people? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or yeah. engaging real life. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. And practically, how, how can we reboot and approach engaging real real life embracing mm-hmm. real people how can we do that a little bit better as a church yeah well i think i think we did you know yeah. and that's uh i think that's the i think could be the hard part of people don't see everything that's going on mm-hmm. but i think of uh i think of a lady who was hungry mm-hmm. and every thursday she would stop by the booth and you could tell mm-hmm. that she depended on this box every week and one time I went out there with Chubbs and Pastor Chubbs, Denise was out there. Um, and, you know, that's how that relationship started, right? Mm-hmm. It yeah. was just very, just real life, right? It might be um, unique to me, but it was very real for her. And that mm-hmm. box, yeah. I mean, some of the things that she would say would just kind of like, she would look in the box and she said, Oh, awesome. I got some tuna. I'm going to make mm. some tuna kebabs. Yeah. Canned tuna kebabs. <laughs> All right. I'm just saying, wow. right? I'm just, I'm like, yeah. wow. Like <laughs> she's depending on this box. Now, yeah. what I'm saying is how do we break? So that, that started building a bridge to mm-hmm. her. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. there was a season where we were open and I can't remember when it was. It was sometime in the summer 
that lady actually, who lived in Davis, by the way, she would drive all the way from Davis to get this box mm. yeah. that she heard through a friend that we had. She drove all the way from Davis to our services just because mm. we were wow. willing to engage mm-hmm. yeah. in providing. I mean, we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, and, I, and I'm just going to say the food pantry, I'm going to champion the food pantry. Come on, food pantry. I'm, I'm proud of the food pantry yeah. because yeah. of what all just that idea and what happened because of it. But it really started because I, we just wanted to touch people yeah. where they were at. They're yeah. hungry. Yeah. Let's feed the hungry mm-hmm. and see what God does. Mm-hmm. I, I think you said something I thought was good. When you love people in the practical, God will show up in the supernatural. Yeah. And, and I think that's what the food pantry is. Mm-hmm. Um, the calls that we made to all our members or all the people connected to Real Life Church, I think in this yeah. reboot, it's shown us what matters most. Right. That we can't put all our stock in the Sunday service. Right. Mm-hmm. That God is calling us outside of just the service or the celebration mm-hmm. and to love people right where they're at. And that's right. the food pantry, that's visiting people at the hospitals, mm-hmm. going back to touching people in the everyday lives. Yeah. And I, I think that's what we've been doing that. We've been rebooting. Yeah. Back to the basics. And to be honest, when you start doing that, that's when it gets messy, right? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People want you to reach the community. In mm-hmm. fact, that was one of the big things when I interviewed for this job. We want to be a church that reaches the community. Well, we all want to reach the community until we actually start reaching the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they start coming to Sunday service and... You know, right. they might look different. They might smell different. Right. They might, you know what I mean? They Believe come, different. <laughs> they come with everything, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. And so it takes time, yeah. right, to walk with people. And this is what I would, this is why the mission was so clarified for me is we have to engage in real life. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And we have to embrace real people. Yeah. If we're ever going to see God change their lives. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So... Uh, for me, and again, that that the mission was clarified through a word that we got from Bishop Miller, who mm-hmm. who recently mm-hmm. just passed away. Um, and ironically, I was writing uh, my year in letter to the church, and I put that prophetic word in there. The next day, B- Bishop Miller passed. But for me, it's just a I think a clarion call to what God is calling us to. That's who I am, right? That's who I am. That's what reached me. Yeah, somebody was. R- was willing to reach a knucklehead, 17-year-old like me, yeah. senior in high school, addicted to drugs, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Someone was willing to get messy with me and eventually embraced me. And I eventually I had an encounter six months later with the real God, Jesus Christ, who changed my life. And, and that's what I want to be about as a church. So what mm-hmm. you're saying is God is going to use the way people love you and how they can encounter God. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's good. And I think all, you know, every church has a different mandate. Every church has, you know, we were all about our vision and you, you can't become something unless you know how to become it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, that's for me, clarifying our mission is we, we got to We've got to We got to fulfill yeah. the mission and stop focusing on filling the building. Yeah, mm. that's good. Mm-hmm. But I, I really like how you tied in. Um, people encountering God is going to come from us loving people unconditionally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you love people who don't love you back, or when you um, do acts of kindness, yeah, uh, random acts of compassion, that's essentially God using you. And, and, and your faithfulness to, in, to for someone else to encounter him. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to like rebooting how we engage in real life, embrace real people, and how people encounter in God, it's actually going to be connected to, to how we love people, mm-hmm. yeah. how we love God, and Not how very, we love people. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think it's it's super mm-hmm. connected, and which kind of brings me to a, another question in in rebooting. I think one of the things that we've also recognized is that we have to reprioritize our priorities. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Like we have to, Someone like, <laughs> talked about that. Yeah, <laughs> right? mm-hmm. Pastor Jesse did a, a phenomenal job. If you haven't heard the message, <laughs> I yes. think it's one of her best messages that I've no, heard. No, it definitely, we're all growing yeah. and I'm, I'm going to just brag on you. That was, it was, that was one of your best messages. Yeah, you killed it. <laughs> yeah. Knocked it out the park. Okay. Um, but she talked about um, prioritizing the most important thing. And I loved how you contrast 
Martha and Mary, cultural mm-hmm. norms in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Can you speak into that? Uh, speak into that a little bit. Yeah, um, I'll just give the preface because you know everyone needs to go watch the message. But in case you haven't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. get those views <laughs> up. Yeah. Get the views up. <laughs> yeah, right. um, you know, w- so you have the picture of Mary and Martha, and uh, we know that Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, and it's a very simple picture if you're just reading it on the surface. You know, and sometimes actually, when I remember first reading that story and being like, "Well, that, that's kind of weird," you know, mm. sitting at the feet of Jesus. Um, but when I studied it more, um, you know, that that seat was the seat of disciples. And so mm. um, the, the story is significant in a couple of different ways for women because um, it's a story about women in the Bible mm-hmm. interacting with Jesus. So that's important. And then you see, um, you know, Jesus talking about uh, Mary sitting at my feet and listening. So that's huge. But there's actually something more significant there is that Mary sat at the seat of a disciple. So um, you have a woman who um, is not doing her normal woman duties, Mm -hmm. sitting at the feet. That's that's bucking cultural norms. Yeah. But also, how how much do we fulfill our cultural norms, Mm -hmm. whatever whether it's man or woman, to do the things that we need to do, but we don't take the seat of a disciple, Mm -hmm. and the seat of a disciple is sitting at the feet of Jesus, and and listening and and you know taking in what he's saying. It's a contemplative position. It's not a doing position. You know. So I think the profound nature of that is, um, the seat of Jesus is against America. What our cultural norms are Mm -hmm. to do, to be, to go harder, just do it. You know, do all those yeah, kind of things. Yeah. And get what, your dreams. what, yeah, get your dreams, <laughs> chase after them, do whatever you need to do. You know, this is America. Um, but, but in that moment, like yeah. Jesus is like, look, Martha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, all this stuff, it doesn't matter. What, what matters is this place that I want you to be is at my feet listening, just like soaking in what I'm saying. And this position is open to anybody. That's good. Yeah. Is open to anybody. Wow. And so when we align our priorities, it's getting to that place first at the feet of Jesus where, first of all, maybe it's to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Like, that's really hard for us yeah. to be quiet. We've had a lot of opportunity in the pandemic to be quiet, but I wouldn't, <laughs> I don't know if we've actually... <laughs> <laughs> taking the opportunity, I right? <laughs> well, I, I, I myself, I've probably filled it with more, um, you know, what shows can I watch? Or, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I have taken opportunities. I don't want to downplay that. But um, we have a addiction to busy. Yeah. And so yeah. it's kind of getting in that quiet place mm-hmm. and really trying to find Jesus and like, what does he have for me? What's his calling to me? So, yeah. yeah, I think that's really good. I think what you're saying is, I think, in at least through this the pandemic, you're you're doing some soul searching and you're finding out and discovering what matters most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? What matters most to you. And I think as we reboot, that's that's one of the things, like rebooting. Like I wanna reboot to what matters most. Mm-hmm. All yeah. this peripheral stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. All the you know, as far as like church life goes, you know, how many are there on a Sunday? Yeah. You know, I I I think I got more fulfillment out of hearing all of the testimonies from the care calls than like the number of people that were in a Sunday service. You know, it was so uh, awesome to get the prayer requests and, hey, this is our need or, hey, you know, just hearing from people and how they were doing Mm -hmm. rather than like, hey, how many did you have on a Sunday? So it's just like what we're rebooting up to, I believe, is really what matters most, not only just to us, but I really believe um, the heart of God, mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know, and he obviously he wants us to be at his feet. That's where we receive instructions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just feel like, um, yeah, we've got to reboot and we've got to find ourselves sitting at the feet. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think we have to reprioritize his presence, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because yes. yeah. Martha was busy mm-hmm. doing, mm-hmm. Mary was busy. Uh, she wasn't busy, but she was resting mm-hmm. and surrendering and mm-hmm. receiving. Yeah. And I think, like you said, in our culture, we can, we can perform, we can be busy, we can do. Mm. And when you sit at the feet of Jesus and you rest in his presence, he reveals to you what already belongs to you. Mm-hmm. But when you're busy, you're trying to make something happen for you that Jesus already made happen for mm-hmm. you. And mm-hmm. I, I think that, you know, we use, we, well, we see this scripture in John, I think it's John 14 or 15, where it talks about I'm the vine, you're the mm-hmm. branch. Mm-hmm. And apart from me, you can't do mm-hmm. anything on your own. 
we don't have to produce a life on our own. We yeah. receive a life that yeah. Jesus already purchased. And I yeah. think that's the difference between, I think you mentioned it in your message, be, between an orphan mindset mm-hmm. and a child of God yeah. mindset. Mm-hmm. One yeah. makes demands, other receives. Yeah. Yes. One performs, one surrenders. Yeah. One focuses on uh, performing and pleasing. The other one knows that uh, God is already well pleased yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really liked how you kind of, contrast that and, and broke that mm-hmm. down. But that's the power of the gospel. That Right. right? Yeah, that yeah. is the power of yes, the gospel. We right. talked about rebooting mm-hmm. to the power of the gospel. And we mm-hmm. say, oh, the power of the gospel, right? Mm-hmm. I know it. I, mm-hmm. I know, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's it's Jesus dying on the cross, mm-hmm. Jesus buried and, you know, ri- rising again, right? Yeah. But I think it becomes, we, we know that so well, it becomes mm-hmm. trivial, mm-hmm. Yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. it loses its power. Yeah. But... Rebooting to the gospel is just that. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Absolutely. It's it's. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not rebooting with an orphan mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's one of the things that I think I'm coming out of. Just like, and my really the word personal word that God's given me for 2021 is just grace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like mm-hmm. a grace for myself. Mm-hmm. That's a good. One. Right. Yeah. Not just not for just, people. Right. A grace for, yeah. for others. Yeah. Right. 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 For Which I generally have a lot of grace for people. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I have grace for You're people. You're an Enneagram nine. That's <laughs> right. what you do. I'm, yeah. I'm the sweetheart of the Enneagram. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for reminding yeah. me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but like grace for myself. Right. Yeah. When I reboot, like I am approved. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's already then, pleased with and you. And then I can yeah. get, again, I, this is where I feel like when I'm in that place of grace, right? It's, I'm resting, like yeah. you said, but now I'm willing, because I'm not trying to earn any type of approval from men, mm-hmm. I will risk my mm-hmm. reputation for God yes. to do mm-hmm. things. Come on. Mm-hmm. Listen, to do things that, are going to cost me yeah. to do things that might be a little bit yeah. risky or take some big steps of faith. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think for me, just rebooting to, yeah. uh, you know, mm-hmm. be, being a son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, well done, my good and faithful mm-hmm. servant. You reminded me and you too of some, I actually was going to talk about this in my message and I, and I forgot <laughs> that right now. Um, but it, uh, in the book that I, I just read that I'm doing my small group on the deeply formed life, he talks about, you know, having a time of silence with God, which yeah. we think of prayer, especially as charismatics yeah. or Pentecostals, like you're, you know, you're talking yeah. and, you know, it's like, a, mm-hmm. and, and so he, he's saying, you know, uh, sitting in silence with the Lord, you know, just that, that spot. Yeah. And he talked about how, um, sometimes we can get really discouraged because when we sit on that silence, lots of things come into our head, all our things that we got to do, all of our problems. Yeah. And so what we have to be disciplined to do is turn back to God. Yeah. Like, okay, I surrender that thought. Now I'm going to come back to Jesus. And there's grace in that moment. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, in fact, a grace and also you're learning how to turn back to God yeah, in the yeah. midst of those distractions. Because the reality is um, it's easy to say, to, to verbally say like, um, uh, I want to do what God wants me to do matter, no matter how many haters there are, yeah. right? Like yeah. I'm going to pursue this. But the reality is it's really hard. Yeah. Um, you talked about earlier the us against them mentality is so strong right now, yeah. right? Yeah. And so when, when you're trying to pursue something God is asking you to do, mm-hmm. that's a longevity game. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes it can be months, years, whatever. But if you're continu- if you have a posture of continually turning back to God, yeah. even in those distractions, you grow stronger and ab- and being able to do that. And so, yeah. um, again, it's that realignment, like, and then seeing the grace in that, not being yeah. like, man, I I failed at that again. I, right. I did yeah. so wrong. But I don't know. The grace in that is that God's got you. Yes. Right. Like. As you turn back to him, he's got you over and over and over again. And and that grace then extends to others who are the them in the same situation. Yeah. One one of the things I think about when I'm sitting in silence, you know, resting in his presence, something I think we often don't like, but it's needed when you're a son. But if you don't have the mindset that Mm -hmm. you're a child of God, you'll, you'll take this aspect of your relationship with the Lord not in a good way, but in silence or when we're resting, he can correct us too. Correct. Right. The Bible says he disciplines and he corrects those Mm -hmm. who he love, but it's never a correction for punishment's sake. It's just course correction. Mm. Hey, you were wrong when you said that on social media. Hey, you were wrong when you acted that way. And I think that that's what resting and reprioritizing his presence, it allows us to be adjusted, corrected, Mm. and put on a a course that where we can receive his best. Mm -hmm. 
And when you reboot your mindset from an orphan to a child of God, you'll see correction yeah. as love, mm-hmm. yeah. not as punitive, not as punishment. And I yeah. think that's super important. I think, Very you know, if, if you've come from a broken background mm-hmm. or, you know, authority, authoritative figures misused you or misused mm-hmm. their authority, correction yeah. may rub you the wrong way. It could mm-hmm. be a trigger mm-hmm. when it's supposed <laughs> to just be a conviction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important not to dis- disguise your triggers from undealt with pain with God's way of bringing a conviction to bring you to healing. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I know we, we can, we can continue to talk. Oh, we could go on yeah, this yeah, forever. For, yeah. I got yeah, so many for, things. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, you know, we can all agree that the global church, the big C mm-hmm. church, when I log on and listen to different messages, it seems like the church at large is start over is somebody's theme. Reboot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, reset. The reset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not saying it was original. But. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, so what, what can we do practically as individuals to support what God is doing collectively in the big church? What can mm-hmm. we do individually in our reboot? I know you talked about showing up. I know, Pastor yeah. Dean, you mentioned mm-hmm. some things. But in, in our final thoughts, final words, what's some things that our, our YouTube watchers and podcast mm-hmm. listeners, what can they take away with practically if they like, hey, I need to reboot? What are some things they can do individually to support what God is doing collectively? Yeah, I think um, there's, for me personally, I'm just going to talk out of my personal life and use maybe one or two examples, but you have to decide what is not going to be turned back on. Yeah. And so, um, and then, for example, for me, um, probably four or five years ago now, uh, a year before I came to real life, uh, the Lord powered down my blogging, my writing. Mm -hmm. And I've tried some restarts here and there and it just you know when it's not God's timing Mm -hmm. and he's telling you to hey that's supposed to be powered off for this season Um, but now as I'm rebooting I'm being stirred in that area again to start writing and start blogging again Mm -hmm. and so um, I'm relaunching those things so I think one of the key things is what's gonna stay turned off what's gonna power back mm. up with mm. you. So for me, it's been powered down for four plus years or so, but in this reboot for me, my writing yeah. is going to be rebooted. And that is, a um, for me, that is a way that I process. Um, it's a way that I minister. Yeah. And so I'm excited about that. I'm stirred up uh, about that. Um, I'm trying to think of something else um, as far as something powering on is uh, my rhythms, Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, rhythms is something that I'm really focused on mm-hmm. right now. Um, I was an avid reader before I came a lead pastor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I was just like, I just got to get my Bible reading in, you know. <laughs> um, but I've got a list of books. I've finished two books now. Um, so just fighting for my rhythms. Yeah. And that's something that's rebooting. So um, know what is gonna needs to stay off and then focus on the mm-hmm. things that... It's okay. Are yeah. are maybe getting revived mm-hmm. in your life or need to be revived? Mm-hmm. That's good. A couple examples. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna I'll say this every time. There's probably people get tired of hearing it, but it's <laughs> to read your Bible, to reboot, and and not mm-hmm. and not. Let me just say, like, not just reopening it, you know, random chapter in a day and like reading it, but actually discovering what is God saying in it and mm-hmm. what is he saying it to. You. So some common you know practices of reading your Bible, observe it, apply it, that type of thing, and then understanding the context of what God is doing the whole Bible. Bible is pointing to Jesus. Yeah. Um, cause I, I believe that this is the revelation of Jesus. Exactly. It. Um, I, I think that this is a huge problem right now. Yeah, this is a new covenant. Yeah. Teaching. By <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> this is where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's the grace filled life. It's the right. grace filled life. Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and I think that if we all began to read the scripture in light of the revelation that Jesus is re- resurrected, we would see new scripture, yeah, mm-hmm. like the same words, new scripture, yeah. Um, and so uh, I would say, like, that's the first thing to to begin to reboot because to understand grace, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to understand Jesus. You have to yeah. understand Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, reading your Bible is, you know, yeah. My kids would probably get tired of me. I know that's <laughs> one thing. Oh, I'd read right now. Um, reading your Bible and then, uh, to support collectively the whole church you yeah. talked about. Yeah. 
Um, staying connected with your local leaders. Yeah, uh, we talked about this yeah, on yeah. our midweek, um, mid um, but yeah. can't underscore it enough. Staying connected to your local leaders, um, and not just like online, not just I mean I mean not just on social media, yeah. um, but like staying connected. I don't know if everybody knows, but on Sunday morning you can get on and talk to a host pastor while you're watching the service. Yeah. You like you know you can't do that on Sundays when we're all in yeah. service, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like you can't walk up to a pastor while we're speaking and go like, "Hey, what does that mean?" Yeah. Like on Sunday mornings, there's a unique opportunity right now that you can get on and talk to host yeah. pastors. So, like staying connected locally instead of farming out all of your inspiration, right. staying connected locally, I think, is a good way to to reboot. Get invested in your local church. Yeah, so yeah. good, huge. I'm I'm gonna add something you said this uh, past Sunday. Show up with your tribe too. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I think it's super important not to do life alone. Yeah. Show up with your tribe because God did not design us to do life isolated. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, he designed us to do life in unity yeah. or in community. Um, so I think that's just super important. Show yeah. up with your tribe. Show up with your brokenness. Yeah. Show up and yeah. um, just show your, up. Just yeah, show, show up. Show up. In your imperfections yeah. and, and know yeah. that the grace of God yeah. will meet you where you're at. He, he called the sick. And the loss. He's not looking yeah. for the yeah. perfected and those who have it all together. Yeah. So just show up. If I could share a story real quick to interrupt you. Um, um, I, all, a lot of you know Marianne. You know Marianne. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember meeting her um, maybe two years ago. It, it was at a, um, like a leadership lab. And um, we were talking and she didn't really know a lot of people. And I asked her what a couple of her interests were because she was interested in being a leader. And, um, and she said, kids ministry. I said, okay, let me get you connected to, you know, our kids ministry. And I didn't really know then what I know now is that she was, you know, she, she had no tribe because mm. she was new to the area. Yeah. Um, and that was something that was, she was seeking, you know, and, um, we were just talking the other day and, and she doesn't know I'm talking about her. So hopefully she's okay with this, but, <laughs> She'll be watching. um, yeah. the Lord has like made a profound impact on her through mm -hmm. her tribe yeah. and it has, has been through kids ministry and yeah. through some area, other areas, but that didn't just like drop in her lap. Mm-hmm. They did not drop in Marianne's. If you know Marianne, right. you know that Marianne pursued yeah. tribe. She yeah. pursued community. She showed up. Yeah. Like, she showed up when she probably didn't feel like showing right, up. Right. She showed up in her weakness. She showed up not being like the rest of us necessarily, yeah. like yeah. kind of being an outsider. And it, it, I was just, I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm like, the Lord, what the Lord has done in her life. Yeah. Is a miracle. Yeah. yeah. Like to show up to a place to that you don't know anybody. And now, however many years later, she's like one of our main leaders. Yeah. Thriving, like, uh, you know, loves this place. We're going to be sad when she yeah. moves on to her next assignment. Like it's a two, it's a commitment. It yeah. takes two, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, th this is not going to drop in your lap. You got to pursue it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Man, this was a great conversation. Yeah, great conversation. <laughs> uh, well, I just want to thank all my podcast listeners and YouTube watchers. Thank you for tuning in to the This Is Real Life podcast, where we talk about engaging real life, embracing real people, and encountering a real God. Make sure you follow us on YouTube, on social media, for all the updates and what's happening at Real Life Church. We love you guys. And again, thank you for tuning in. God bless. God bless. God bless you guys. Get out your seat. Live out your destiny. Get out and stop your